بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واعلموا أنما غنمتم من شيء فأن لله خمسه ولرسول ولذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة لأهل التقوى واليقين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين العبد المؤيد الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أما بعد فقد قال الحكيم في كتابه الكريم واعلموا أن ما غنمتم من شيء فأن لله خموسه وللرسول ولذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل خمس is an important concept in Shia religion It is actually an institution that helps finance the religious seminaries, the religious schools and charitable organizations across the Shia world. Therefore, Khums plays an important role in the growth and development of Shia seminaries. Without Khums, many religious seminaries, many religious schools do not and cannot operate. The more people give their Khums dues, the better the religious seminaries operate. There is no doubt in it. Now, what is Khums and what are the different rules of Khums? Khums literally means one fifth, but technically, Khums means one fifth of your income. Whatever you earn by means of trade, work, or by way of offering prayers for others, or you receive something as a gift, Khums is payable on it, on the amount of money, on the property which you have in your possession, and anything which you earn within a year, provided that that thing, whether it is money, whether it is a property or something, is not used or it is not consumed within a year. If a year passes over something, homes should be paid from it. Now you have, for example, a, a, a bag of flour, a bag of wheat, or a bag of foodstuffs stored in your house. You have bought it in the month of Muharram, just an example I'm giving. You have bought it in the month of Muharram. When the next month of Muharram arrives and there is something left from that bag of flour or from that bag of wheat, you have to give one-fifth of that thing as khums so that you can purify it so that you can consume the rest 
of the flower. So khums is always applicable on the surplus. Khums should be paid from the excess. If you have bought something, if you have bought something, and you have kept it aside in your home, or in, you have put it in your box. For example, you have bought a shirt for yourself, and you forgot to use it. Now a whole year has passed on that shirt. Khums should be, bought, khums should be paid from that shirt. Otherwise, you cannot offer your prayers wearing that shirt. As I may have mentioned in the previous uh, sessions, a person's dress must be clean, it must be uh, bought with halal money, it should be obtained from a halal source, otherwise you cannot offer your prayers wearing that shirt. Now if you have not paid khums from the money with which you bought the shirt, or if you have left the, the, the shirt in your box and did not use it within a year after you bought it with, that, with the income of the same year or with the money from which you have not paid any uh, khums, then in this case you cannot wear that shirt because that shirt is treated as a usurp shirt unless and until Unless and until you pay khums from that shirt, you cannot wear it during prayers. Another example, if you have received a gift from someone, for example, a bride goes to her father-in-law's house. On that wedding day, she receives a lot of gifts from her relatives from her in-laws. She cannot use all of those gifts. She cannot use all of those gifts within a year. She has many, she has got many dresses to wear. She has got many gold rings. She has got many jewelry and many gold items. Some of them she uses, okay, if, if she uses some of them, within a year after she receives them as a gift, then there is no problem. Homes is not payable on those objects which she has used within a year. But if there are something like the dresses she has received as gifts from her relatives and the gold rings or the gold necklace or maybe the gold, the jewelry she has received from her relatives on the wedding day or on any other occasion, maybe on her birthday, on her birthday or during any other celebrations and she can, could not use them or forgot to use them within a year, it is necessary for her to, get, to, to pay khums from that thing. It does not make any difference whether that thing is a small thing or something very big. It could be a perfume, a bottle of perfume. It is very uh, cheap and, and it seems to be something very small. And many people don't think that khums is payable from the, uh, on the perfume. If you have got a bottle of perfume, a part or maybe some part of the a little of the perfume has been used by you and there is something left in the bottle. If, at her, if, if the bottle and the perfume has a market value, it has a market price and there are people who might buy it from you, then of course you have to pay khums from it and khums is payable on it and you cannot use it unless you pay khums from that object. And remember that it's not necessary to pay homes from the same property, from the same object, because you, you cannot tear it, you cannot break it into five pieces and give one-fifth of that thing to the poor. You cannot, give, you cannot break something uh, into five 
parts and give one piece or one part of that object to your merger. No, you can calculate its market price. You can evaluate its market price. Just say or think of it as, uh, of how much it, it costs if, if it's sold on the market. How much is its market value or its price? Then give one-fifth of that thing as homes to your merger. Of course, there are details, there are uh, uh, other rules that, which I will explain in the coming session. This is just an introduction to the subject of Homs, which is an important concept in Shia and theology and, and in Shia jurisprudence. Homs is both a theological topic as well as a jurisprudential topic. It has been discussed both in theology as well as in fiqh. Because many uh, Sunnis and many other Muslims who do not follow uh, who do not follow the Shia religion and who do not subscribe to Homs consider it as something new to the religion. While it's not new. Many of you wonder as to what are the proofs and evidence and what are the uh, verses or narrations which refer to, to the concept of Khums. Of course, I did recite a, holy, a verse from the Holy Quran. The Quran says in Surah Anfal, verse 41, uh, this is the verse which says that whatever you earn, you should give one-fifth of it as khums. Of course, khums is divided into six parts. One part is the portion of God, another the portion of the Prophet, and then one part is the portion of the close relatives of the Holy Prophet or the Ahlul Bayt, the Zil Qurba, who are the Ahlul Bayt. And then there are the orphans, Wabn Sabil, the those people who have been stranded and of course on the way to their homes or maybe back homes or on to their destinations with, without money, of course, who have been stranded without money. And then the orphans, the, the needy, the indigent, the very poor people. Uh, so homes is the property of these five groups. Yes, God, the Prophet, the Ahlul Bayt, the Dhul Qurba, then the orphans, the very needy people, the Masakin, and then the Ibn Sabil. Ibn Sabil, which means those people who have been stranded without money and those who have been on a journey, they, though they might be very poor, very rich, and they're back in their homes, but since they have uh, spent all their money and they have now got nothing to, 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 to use or to buy anything, so they are the ones who can receive khums. Inshallah, the details will come. I will further explain on who are the people who should receive khums and who are the people who deserve to receive khums. This is something different. But this is the verse which refers to the concept, to the concept of khums or to the institution of khums, which is 
an important institution. So now having said that, that whatever exceeds, as I said, whatever exceeds your annual expenses, you should pay khums from the excess, from the surplus. Whatever that thing might be, khums should be paid from it. Khums is liable, khums is payable on that object. It does not make any difference whether that thing is uh, as, as small in a very uh, tiny object and uh, maybe it is very cheap in terms of value or it might be something big like uh, the house in which you live or the house which you have bought or maybe you might have an extra house, you might have an extra car or you may have, might have a car with which you uh, drive people from place to place. You are using it as a taxi. Now, these are different questions which can be raised and answered in, in, in the following sessions to come. But there is one thing to mention. Once you are going to pay khums, khums is divided into two portions, saham, or into two shares, into two shares. Maybe portions is a, a more appropriate term that can be used here. Khums is divided into two portions. One is the portion of imam, which is called sahmi imam, and the other is the portion of sadat, which is called sahmi sadat. When you have extracted, when you have taken out khums from your party, you have to divide it into two parts, into two portions. As far as the portion of Sadat is concerned, the portion of Sayyids, those people whose lineage, whose, whose uh, line actually reaches the uh, Holy Prophet and maybe Hashim, because according to scholars, those people whose lineage reaches Hashim, the, grand, the great grandfather of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he is considered to be a Sayyid. So, a Sayyid is one whose lineage reaches the Prophet and the Prophet's grandfather, great grandfather Hashim. He is treated as a Sayyid and he can receive khums if he is needy. If he, if he is qualified for it, but for example, if he is a faithful Sayyid, if he is a practicing Sayyid, then he deserves to receive it. Yes. So Khums should be divided into two portions, Sahmi Imam and Sahmi Sadat, as far as the portion of Sadat is concerned. Many scholars, most of the scholars say that you can give it, uh, you, you yourself can give it directly to the Sadat, to the needy Sayyids, you can give it. You do not need any permission from your marja. You can give it directly to whomsoever you want, provided that he should be Sayyid, he should be needy, and he should be a practicing, a faithful person. He might be your brother, he might be your uncle, he might be your cousin, and he might be a person who is living in your neighborhood. He might be a relative or he may not be a relative. You cannot give it to your father or maybe to your son. If you yourself is a Sayyid, if you yourself is a Sayyid, you cannot give it to your father. You cannot give it to your mother. You cannot give it to your child because they are the ones whom you should provide for. They are the ones who have a right on you. They are your wajibun nafaqa. It means that you have to provide for them. You have to give them their food, their medicine, and you have, provide for, you have to provide for their medical uh, expenses, everything. He must be something other. He must be someone other than your son, your father, and your mother. Yes. So as far as the portion of Khums uh, Sadat is concerned, you can give it to the Sadat and you do not need any permission. As far as the portion of Imam is concerned, this is an important question. Uh, many people ask as to whom we should give 
our homes and whom should we give our the portion of imam can we spend it ourselves without any uh, without the permission of the marja of course many of you do not have access to your marja so this is this remains the question you do not have access actually you cannot sometimes you make a call and the, your call is not replied or you, your call is not answered by the office of your marja so as to seek permission or is to re, uh, get permission your your marja's permission so this remains a question an important concern for most of you now the answer is this that you cannot spend it arbitrarily you cannot spend or uh, uh, eat the portion of imam without seeking your marja's permission without getting your mujtahid's permission his permission is a must it is an important thing that you must acquire before spending it Mawla. Even though there might be needy people, there might be religious seminaries, there might be charitable organizations, and there might be uh, um, bridges that need to be uh, built for the mu'minin, or maybe a mosque is, is in need of construction, you cannot spend it, you cannot give it to a mosque a uh, custodian to a uh, trustee to the trustee of a mosque for the construction of the mosque for the construction of a husseiniya and imam barga unless and until you obtain your marja's permission that is important of course many of the scholars many of the mujtahidin do not easily give their permission for such for such thing for such uh, needs because there are more important uh, areas that where the khums and where the, propo- the portion of imam must be spent. There are, of course, there's no doubt that there are more important con- uh, areas where the portion of imam must be spent. For example, as I mentioned, the religious seminaries are in dire need of assistance. They are in dire need of an income. And of course, khums is one of the main uh, sources of avenue, sources of income for the religious seminaries. The seminaries cannot run unless this asset pours in regularly. And this support and this assistance comes in continuously. There should not be any break, any interval in the Mm, in, in the payment of homes by the mu'minin to the religious seminaries, to the religious authorities. Otherwise, many uh, religious seminaries s- s- cease, cease to function. Many religious seminaries stops, stop functioning. This is an important thing. And, of course, if an occasion arises where you want to spend the portion of imam for a local school or for a local madrasa or for an important charitable purpose you must email your marja you must send a letter to your marja or you must call make a call to your marja to get his permission unless and until you get his permission you cannot spend it if you spend it then you will not be relieved of the obligation dear brothers and sisters Many people collect the khums from here and there from the mu'minin under the name of a wakil, claiming to be a wakil of a marja, a certain marja. Many institutions collect khums and the portion of imam from the mu'minin uh, telling them that they have, they have uh, ijaza, they have permission from the marja, from a certain marja. This is an allegation which needs proof. 
Whoever claims to be a marja, whoever claims to be a representative, uh, whoever claims to be a deputy of a certain marja, his claim must be proved, his claim must be demonstrated through a document, a written letter, which normally a jurist issues and gives to that person who claims. Now, if a person claims to be a representative of a certain marja, he should show his vikalat nama, his letter of authority, his authorization letter to the person who gives him his khums. And then he should also give, upon receiving the amount of khums, he should give a sealed receipt, a receipt which bears the seal of his marja and not that of his, of his own uh, seal. He should give a receipt which bears the seal and the stamp of his marja, of his mujtahid, of the, of, of the mujtahid who is followed by the person who gives his khums, his his portion of Imam. Many people give their own receipt, they have their own special stamp, their own special mohr, and their own special seal, and they give a letter of receipt, or maybe a receipt, they give it to the person, telling him that this is the receipt. No, you cannot accept that. And you will not be relieved of the obligation. You are not Consider to have been, to have given your khums if you do not receive a sealed receipt from the person who claims to be a representative of your marja. This is an important question, inshallah, in the next session to come. I will further elaborate on some important questions and some important issues within the uh, institution of khums, within this whole chapter, the chapter of khums or bab. Al -khums. This is an important concern. And of course, uh, 50, I believe, 50% of the questions which the ulama and marajah receive through their websites have something to do with khums. Many people still wonder how to pay off their khums. Many people still don't know how to pay off, how to get relieved of this obligation. And many people have not yet paid their re religious dues and their homes simply because they are either unaware of the issues of the rules of pay payment of homes or there is some other reason for that. Inshallah, keep following the discussion and the, the, the remaining details will come in the next session. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. God bless you. ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا يا ربنا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا يا ربنا يا ربنا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا يا ربنا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا